Hello everyone, Mike Rempel from Excel Bytes with today's Excel blog post. Today we're going to take a look at the cube value function. And what this is, is converting your pivot tables to using the cube functions that allow you to manipulate and reorganize your data in a way that normal pivot tables doesn't allow. So this gives you some flexibility in how you want your data laid out with still retaining some of the functionality of pivot tables. So let's see how we can do that in Excel. So here I have a data range. If I hit control in, looks like we have about 2,000 entries in it. And I want to use a pivot table to analyze this data. So I'm going to select insert pivot table. I'm going to put it on a new worksheet. And I think I'm going to just click on department, supply, and total. And there I have the basic layout of my pivot table. I'm going to go ahead and just go to valued field settings number format number here just to format the values to make them a little bit easier to see and I have the basics of my pivot table you can see it adds up to a million two hundred and thirteen thousand but if I wanted to rearrange this data in certain ways for example if I want to insert a row here and use control plus Excel will not allow me to do that or maybe I want to take this data here and I'm gonna cut it and I want to move it up to here to change the layout a little bit differently again Excel won't allow me to do those kind of things now if I click into my data here you can see where there are values it just shows the value up in the formula bar or where there are labels again you just see those labels up there However, if I want to do something a little bit differently to allow those kind of actions to do a layout a little bit more to my liking, I want to convert these to formulas. But now I'm going to open up a separate workbook. It has the exact same data in it, and we're going to convert this to a pivot table with a couple minor changes. Now the first thing, it's not necessary, but I'm going to recommend it, and I'm going to show you why in a minute, is to convert your data to a table. So I'm going to hit Control T. I'm going to say OK, and I'm going to name my table Purchases. And I'm going to then go to the Insert tab, say Pivot Table. But this time, I'm going to check this, add this data to the data model. And I'm going to say OK. And again, I'm going to lay it out very similarly. I'm going to select Department and Supply and total to give me the same information I had before and I'm going to format my data the same way so you'll see that it's laid out very similarly to the way we had the first one laid out now one difference you'll notice here is in the previous workbook if I click in my pivot table and go to analyze notice the OLAP tools is not accessible it's grayed out but because I added this to the data model, in the new one, OLAP Tools is available and it allows me to convert to formulas. If I click on that, notice now any place that there was a label is a cube member formula. Any place there was a value is a cube value formula. Now, before we go any further, I also want to show you one other thing. I'm going to go back to my pivot table layout. And if I go ahead and add, say, a filter into my pivot table. When I do the conversion, I have a separate option here, and that is to convert report filters. If I don't check that box and leave it, notice my filters are still intact, and I can filter my data just like I could with a pivot table. Notice I do that, just select Indiana, and my total, which was a million two thirteen, is now down to six hundred and fifty thousand. So that option is available. If I take this back to my pivot table, go to Analyze, OLAP Tools, Convert to Formula, and I check that box and say Convert, notice this also turns to a formula, and I don't have that filtering option as easily as I did before. One other thing, take this back to a pivot table. I'm going to remove the filters here and instead I'm going to add a slicer. Now if you want to use slicers 
with your cube formulas, you need to add them before you convert it. So I'm going to select campus here and say OK and maybe reformat this or change the layout a bit. And again, if I select Indiana, it filters it down to 650,000, North Point 286,000. I can clear that. But now if I convert this to formulas, my slicer still works to filter the data. Indiana 650,000, North Point 286,000. But now I have the flexibility of laying out my data the way I want to. So for example, if I want to take fine arts and health and human services, maybe move it up there, take humanities, math, uh, cut that, and move it up into this area here, and maybe I'm going to take and delete all these rows in between, which will move my grand total up. Now I can do some formatting. For example, I'm going to choose my labels here. Whoops, didn't want to choose that one. And I'm going to say maybe change the text to white, change the fill color there, bold it. And then maybe I'll take the values here that are associated with those labels and I'm going to bold those, maybe kick them up a little bit so they stand out a little bit more. Maybe I'll take these two columns and, and narrow them down a little bit and maybe take the others and I'm going to adjust the width so they look a little bit nicer. And then maybe I'll just put some borders around everything and go to my view tab, remove my grid lines. And now I have a nice little layout that I've been able to set up starting with my pivot table, but arranging it in a way that pivot tables wouldn't let me do. One last thing, I am going to change my values to have commas for thousand separators, but no decimal places. So now here's my layout. I'm gonna now take my slicer I'm going to widen it a bit and I'm going to convert it to three columns wide so I have that laid out in that fashion and I'm going to move it up here maybe I'll go ahead and insert a row so it fits a little nicer and again I can use my slicer to filter my data so it will filter just as if it was with a pivot table now, the reason I converted my data range to a table is it allows me to add rows and it'll automatically adjust the value. So, for example, let's go down to the bottom here. If I go to the end of my table and I add a row and I'm going to just take this line here, copy it, move it down. So I'm adding uh, education technology. Now, notice it added a small amount here. But if I go to the education technology, notice it's 86,120. That's the same number it was before. Now I'm going to increase this to something very obvious. I'm going to change this to maybe 5,000. So we kick that up quite a bit, 50,000. If I go back to my layout here, notice I still have 86,100. So what I need to do is go to my data tab and hit refresh all. And once I do that, notice that's kicked up to 136,000. So that connection still works. However, one thing that doesn't work like it does in a pivot table, let's say I go to back to my data and I change a department name. I'm just going to change this to ABC. I'm going to go back to here and I'll refresh my data. Notice the technology dropped that 50,000 that we've added, but it doesn't automatically add that new department like it would with a pivot table. So just some of the things that you can do with cube values and cube member functions in Excel to allow you to take a pivot table, relay it out, and do a little bit more manipulation to set it up like you want to that you can't do with standard pivot tables. And that's how you can do that in Excel. And there you have it. I hope you like what you see. If you do like what you see here, please take a minute to share this post on your favorite social network. I can be found on Facebook, Google+, Twitter, LinkedIn, and YouTube. 
So I hope you enjoy this. If you'd like to see more, please feel free to stop by my website, excel-bytes.com, and I hope you subscribe. So have a great day and happy excelling.